beautiful morning. It's really unseasonably warm this week and I think the long range forecast is continuing to call for much, much milder temperatures than normal. So we're getting this really intense fog this morning in the lower areas. The sun's just starting to peek through. I don't think it's calling for any clouds today too, so it's going to be warm. I'm um, just sitting here thinking about the work that I'm doing here and the work that I've been doing over the last five years and the speed at which I'm doing things. <laughs> Slow in other words. I was thinking back to when I was um, back to living with my parents in my early 20s. I think it was, what, 22? And um, I had started a trade, sheet metal trade, with uh, working with my father down in Toronto. We were driving down there from the smaller town that I lived in, about 45 minutes north of Toronto. And it uh, wasn't very fulfilling work. I didn't, I'd, I kind of liked the sheet metal work. I kind of liked working with my hands and, and building things, but I did not like working in, in Toronto, in the big city. So, um, that was kind of, I was tolerating it and I was looking towards my future because I was taking an apprenticeship and wanting to get, become a journeyman so I could make decent money and have a pretty stable work um, uh, future. But as things happened um, during those periods, a lot of times, because I was doing more uh, outdoor sheet metal, like working on uh, commercial rooftops mainly, the work ended up being somewhat seasonal depending on the weather and uh, in that particular year we got laid off in the winter can't remember exactly when let's say around christmas so i was basically stuck didn't have a car i was i had had a couple of cars earlier but i'd lost them and i uh, was out without transportation so i was getting rides to work with my father and then he would lend me his truck to go up to my cabin on weekends property where I built the cabin and uh, it's going along pretty well it's a, but when I got laid off I was stuck at home essentially during the week and trying to not trying to figure out what to do because I was always pretty active um, but I needed something to occupy my time more fully and what happened is both my father and I got into I guess I had started a few a couple years earlier uh, carving decoys duck decoys so my father kind of got into it too as we were both laid off so we'd be working in the basement together on separate projects but but in close proximity and um i kept it up i think he might have gone back to work and i didn't go back didn't get called back to work and i was um just basically focused on doing this woodworking in the basement of of their house so my point is that I became so passionate about that thing that particular thing at that time that I'd end up staying up till sometimes one, two, three o'clock in the morning carving, and uh, then getting up and excited to get up the next morning to get to continue on the on the carving. So I really, really enjoyed that, and it's kind of been a pattern throughout my life that I get really focused on things, and uh, I'm very passionate about a lot of different things, and I put all my time and energy into those things when I'm when I'm focused on or when I'm uh, attracted to that particular thing at the time. But it's served me well, and I think right now, more than any time in my life, 51-year life, the ability to slow down and focus on something that's fulfilling, I think is more important than ever, and that, that more so over the last 18 months, since we've all been kind of restricted in our travel and our uh, social inter interactions and our work and all that, you know, that kind of stuff. So having a passion that like I'm fortunate to have the space but to have something anything any kind of hobby or or uh, I mentioned it several times uh, maybe it's like focused on people but sort of a smaller footprint but a, sm a focus on a smaller thing that can be done <laughs> passionately and occupy a lot of your time and be fulfilling and uh, I'm fortunate like I said to have the space to do that and I've got infinite projects but working away slowly at something and trying to do the best job I can do at that thing, I think is the, it's my present, but also my future. And I'm very aware of that. As I set my life up 
I'm setting it up in such a way that um, as I have the time and the money, I'm acquiring things that I need to lead a fulfilling life if and when things become even more restrictive or more uh, less available. And you're seeing that, let's, for example, in global shortages of, shortages of things. So especially like, well, ev everything right now, but uh, there's been shortages of like equipment and tools and things like that. Um, you know, even things like if you're not traveling, people are putting in swimming pools and, you know, getting, finding labor and materials to have a swimming pool installed has been uh, arduous for a lot of people. So boats, like all of the things that you would do close to home are becoming hard to get. Um, so I've been fortunate enough to have already been setting myself up for this four or five, well, throughout the last 25 years probably, but more focused on that over the last four or five years, building a place and having the land and having the materials and the equipment to potentially just focus on just doing that for the rest of my life. Let's say I live another 30 years till early 80s. I'd be completely satisfied. <laughs> Not gonna take me that long to build this cabin, but at this pace it's gonna take me a while. Uh, but all the accessory buildings, all the things that I can do on this property to improve it, the wildlife habitat that I want to improve, the forest health that I want to improve, the uh, you know the other the outbuildings and so on um, nurturing harvesting wood and other raw materials that I can use to make interesting things but also nurturing the forest so it continues to provide that near the end of my life and also the next generation so I've got so much to fulfill my, myself and my family that you know uh, I know that I'm very very fortunate I'm very grateful for that and I, I know most people won't have this opportunity. You know, even when we went out west, my wife and I in September, um, looking at real estate out there, because <laughs> it's very tempting to see such a beautiful place to potentially want to live there. And uh, finding acreage like this and, and the quiet um, and availability and access to a, a lot of public land and things like this, but also be able to own a, a large chunk of it with this quiet and with this access is very rare uh, i'm realizing realizing that more and more so i'm fortunate for that but um, like i said i have a lifetime of passion here and uh for people that don't have that i wonder what they could focus on and i i kind of i told the story about living in my parents basement because that was a very small environment very limiting but i was able to find fulfillment with simple pieces of wood you know this big a few carving tools and a little bit of paint and I was able to spend ends up ended up being months at that and I continued doing that even after my wife and I got married and we moved out continued to do some of that carving and and loved it so I've always been aware that I would that I'm a person who can find happiness and fulfillment in small things and uh, the fact that I have larger things is uh, is just a, a bonus to me um, and it, I just look at if I know I'm really restless I know that I need a new frontier all the time I need to explore I can't uh, I can't just shrink my world and then be satisfied to do nothing within that that uh, framework um, so traveling has been interesting like going out west and we ended up putting 13,000 kilometers on my truck in uh, three weeks and just saw as much as possible. In fact, if you were to look back historically, what we saw in these three weeks is what it would take a lifetime to see in the past before modern transportation. And, and uh, you know, those frontiers then are gone. Like the discovery and the exploration are much more limited because of whatever I'm not able to see myself, I'm able to go online and see somebody else doing or go on TV or whatever in the past. So the the newness, the uh, uh, what would you call it, um, novelty, I guess, is is disappearing from life and you have to search for it a little bit harder. Um, so when I look at doing things like uh, building things or making things, like even if it's like, I don't know, puzzle making or painting or Carving um, is a good example. Archery has been one of my passions since I was just a kid when I found my first bow in the local um, 
archery manufacturer's garbage and and put that to use and started making arrows for it. That, that's something I know I could focus 100% of my time on for the rest of my life and be happy doing. So uh, finding these smaller things, especially if you live in a city or live in an apartment, uh, finding places to do things that are fulfilling like that or to um, to have a hobby that you can do in a small dwelling is, um, I think, can be fulfilling in itself. Um, when you factor in people and uh, if you're passionate about uh, spirituality and helping others and so on, there's so many opportunities to do that in an urban environment especially. And uh, again, somewhere you can easily find fulfillment. So, yeah, I know, like I said, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm able to share this with my family at some, and share this with you guys. Like, to think that I've got at least several hundred thousand people watching these videos and, and, uh, getting whatever you get out of it <laughs> I'm not sure why every why some people are watching I know why some people are watching like having access to this is so special now in these times that it's uh, it's kind of a novelty to watch me do these things but um, also the peace the, the quiet is something we don't have much of in our lives and I've got in abundance here so I know that's part of the reason you watch it but it, to uh, I don't know just to be able to share that is one of my passions and one of the things that is meaningful to me and brings me fulfillment and then physically in the future as i get this place to the point where um, it's not only habitable for my family but also for friends and and uh, i don't know acquaintances maybe future workshops or something i, I do want to share this without having an impact and right now virtually is the best way to do that but who knows what the future brings yeah i just uh i don't know a morning like this makes me think how about you know what i have and how much i appreciate it but also how little i could live on and be satisfied as well speaking of that the sun is going to come up and it's going to get warm so i'm going to get finishing these two logs and set those in place and then start preparing the rest no no i've got something else i'm working on right on that side of the cabin i'll show you in the next video on the main channel how uh, once that part's done then i'll be just going nothing but focus on getting the walls up before the snow uh, starts covering up my logs so i'm starting by rough notching this one this end because this was two and a half inches higher than that end off the deck so by rough notching this down two and a half inches roughly I'm going to set that back in place have a fairly uniform um, distance or height spread between here and the deck and then what I can do is scribe both sides with roughly the same Kelly's across the, on the island roughly the same measurement so that the uh, whole thing comes down and sits tight on the deck so roll this back into place and see how that will do it. so this is going to be one of the challenges with these heavy logs is that <laughs> if I don't get the notch exactly right the first time I need to keep moving it and I should have spent more time on the bottom log to get that uniform all the way across the saddle down over top of it that's why a lot of times you see those like concave notches ovals out of the side of the bottom log so that the other one has a uniform saddle to sit down on there's a knot that i didn't notice underneath on this one right in the middle kind of bulging out and i'm caught up on it so i actually have to roll this log back out of place now straighten that bottom piece out and then flip it back over. So funny. Anyway, um, if you're interested in watching this kind of stuff regularly, you can watch me talking on this channel. Um, uh, you can subscribe or just t tune in. But on the other channel, my self reliance, you'll get the longer version of what I'm doing here, quieter, more serene version of it, where I don't talk to the camera, but I do. Uh, show a lot of the stuff that I'm doing like the cooking and the and the working and so on 
and you can subscribe to that channel too if you'd wish anyway back to work thanks for watching i appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time take care